Hey guys, welcome back. So today's a plant tour video. I have a lot to do. There's some propagations I need to look at. There's some watering I need to do. And I did film a few clips a few weeks ago of me repotting my Anthurium forgetii and some other clips. Okay, so let me bring you to this bottom shelf here. So I have my Philodendron McDowell stumps. So if y'all remember from the last video, I propagated my Philodendron McDowell and I really have no space, guys. Like. I actually have no space and my McDowell was really big. So the leaves were just taking over. I couldn't place them in a place where there was enough light. And so I made the decision to just chop the leaves off, start from scratch. So that's what these are. So I'm just gonna head to the sink and we're just gonna take a look. These ones are in wet perlite in a Tupperware. These ones as well. I didn't have high hopes for these ones. <laughs> Um, but it's just in a container with some plastic on top. And then these ones here, these ones are in LECA. So I'll bring you to the sink. Okay, so we're at my sink. Um, let's start off with this container here. So most of the time, guys, I don't like disturbing um, propagations just because I'm always afraid I'm gonna break a newly formed root. Obviously, new roots are extremely fragile, but we have some good signs, guys. Like, look at that new growth over there. We have one right there, and there's a small cute one right over there. So it looks to me there's eight in here. So just quickly, the process that I kind of did when I put these into here. I first submerged these stumps in a diluted hydrogen peroxide mix. So I did one part hydrogen peroxide and two part water. Not for long, just for a few minutes. And then yeah, I just threw them in here with wet perlite. I really prefer this method. Wet perlite ensures, number one, there's enough aeration around the plant, and two, that it's still in a very wet and moist environment. It's the perfect environment for roots to develop. I still do this method with an aeroid mix or soil, but I find that I have more rotting issues just because with an aeroid mix, if it's not chunky enough, sometimes you don't know that there's some pockets of like dense coir, for example, in the middle, LECA, pond, or perlite, it's uniformed air pockets. So I've been just using plain water. Um, I think I'm going to use just a nutrient solution. I have some extra nutrient solution here. You don't have to, you know, I prefer once I see new growth, I like to add just a little bit of nutrient solution. So I'm just putting a little bit. The reservoir is just that much. Obviously, because I'm keeping this top on, you don't need to put the reservoir too high just because there's gonna be less evaporation. Second one is in LECA. So I haven't looked at these in like a week or two. So let's take a look. Okay, there's like literally nothing. <laughs> I can't really tip it, but future Kevin zoom in. So they're just submerged a little bit and I think you could see a few new growth points. I'm currently just using the bottom part of this planter just because it tells me how high the reservoir is. I think you could use more. So first I like assessing to see if there's any rot and the stumps all feel good. Oh my God, I can't even show the luck is just rolling. So you can see there. Look at that new growth, specifically the one right in the middle. Future Kevin, zoom in. That wasn't there before, so that's exciting. You could see over here, look at that. So the one in the middle, I guess you could see a little bit of new greenery there, but the one on the end, there's literally nothing. I'm gonna use my nutrient solution again, and I'm just pouring it over. Right about the halfway mark. I know the stumps are kind of sitting at that point. And I'm just putting the plastic back on top with the corners open, just so there is a little bit of airflow. Number three, I didn't have high hopes. They kind of all look bad. I'm just gonna pull them out. Okay, I remember what happened with this one. So there's actually a new growth point coming out of here, but then it rotted. So. I was like, I'm just gonna throw it in with the rest. I think this might be a goner, guys. Okay, let's continue. This is like kind of sad, guys. Oh, okay, this one. I see some some new greenery, guys. <gasps> wow, I'm shocked by this one. Look, that, I know it's nothing, guys, but wow, look at that. That wasn't there before, the ends aren't squishy, so, okay, that's a win. There's five here. They're not squishy, so I'm going to just put them back. Currently, there's only one that has new growth. And as you can see, these ones are smaller, so they did come from like the older 
parts of the plant and usually those cuttings, propagations, nodes, they take a little bit longer. So I think this was only like two weeks ago that I did this. So yeah, I'm just putting them back on the surface of the perlite. And I'm kind of out of perlite guys, so I'm just putting a layer of LECA. I'm gonna add the nutrient solution. All three containers are going back under that grow light. Again, my grow lights are on for about, okay, I said 16 hours in another video, it's actually 14. I clearly can't do math. And yeah. Okay, so I have my Hoya Clemenciorum. I think that's how you say it. And I think she's ready for a trellis. So look at this new leaf. I don't know why it's curling like this, but she is massive compared to the other ones. And I guess you can't tell because she's like a crescent right now, <laughs> but she's huge. Look at this splashing guys and just like, I cannot wait for this Hoya to grow. I was waiting for this leaf to harden off just because I didn't want to, you know, break it off accidentally. And so now that it's hardened off, I'm going to put a bamboo trellis. I have these cake dowels, like I said before. I tie these with zip ties to the net pot just so I can put either a wire trellis or a bamboo trellis in these holes just because I don't want to waste time repotting. You could see zip tied to the net pot. Now, I get this statement a lot or question, won't the bamboo rot? The answer is eventually yes. However, when I do this method and specifically with Hoyas, I don't put the reservoir past the net pot. So once the Hoya has a substantial root system, I basically just fill the reservoir so it touches the wicks. So because of that, the bamboo isn't necessarily submerged at all times in the reservoir. So again, I have these two hoop trellises. Grab your zip ties. Zip tie one way. Once it's zip tied like that, open it up. Then you're just zip tying the other way. Then you have this kind of shape. I basically just cut these. So I'll put these ends through the cake dowels. Okay, I think we're there guys. Ooh, there we go. And I'm just putting plant tape just to secure it. Again guys, there's different types of Hoyas. Um, this one I think, I'm pretty sure this is one that likes to climb. You could kind of tell which ones prefer to climb because they start to push out when they don't have anything to climb on, they start to push out these adventitious roots. And that's the plant basically, you know, attempting to find something to climb. So I need to find a new place for this plant just because I had the grow light right over here really close. Now that she has this trellis, I'll probably put her against the window. And because we're going to fall in winter, I'm going to have a grow light probably above it as well. Just because the days are getting shorter, Hoyas need a lot of light. I know this benefited from having the grow light really close to the leaves. So yeah, that's her. Okay, we're back in here. My Monstera Aurea, guys. She is outgrowing the plank that I put her on. And so I'm just gonna air layer the top part. Oh my gosh, she's so tall now. I'm just moving a few plants. So this is my huge Jose Bono. Oh my gosh. Let me first show you this leaf. So remember, this one was so pretty, guys. She's starting to crisp up at the yellow parts. And I just wanna show you how cool this plant is. So like she's starting to become more yellow in certain parts. You could see that down here as well. <laughs> she's at the top. She's at the top of this plank. But look at these aerial roots. Like they have latched on. Look, I am pulling it. Look at those roots right over there. But I guess my long-term plan, now that this leaf is not brand new, air layer the top node right over here. Then I'll propagate her right here and just propagate the rest of the plant. She is kind of going in the pattern of pushing out a green leaf or a green leaf with just speckling yellow and then the leaf after that having a lot of irrigation. I kind of do prefer when the yellow is dispersed this way just because the leaves last longer than this. You could see down here that this one's totally gone because of the yellow. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So I'm basically just taking a big long strip here and just putting it around the stem here. And then I'm just taking the sphagnum moss I'm just putting some in. I'm usually more on top of this, like at every node as the plant grows, I wrap or air layer the plant. I might put a Ziploc 
around this one by itself because I'm pretty sure this is like the main aerial route. So I know we're going into fall, guys. I personally don't prefer propagating in the fall and winter just because there's less light. And even though like my room has a lot of window, that doesn't change the fact that there are less hours of natural light coming through the window. And obviously I can't necessarily put all my plants under grow lights just because I have just because I have so many. So yeah, I'm just gonna hope for the best. Um, you know, because I'm air layering, they'll have an existing root system when I propagate it. Do y'all have any opinions about the Aurea? Um, I know yellow variegated plants are not everyone's cup of tea. I personally love yellow variegation. And guys, I'm not like packing it down. I'm just kind of laying it on top. Again, this is already wet or moist from when I first washed it. And lastly, y'all gonna think I'm weird, but I said I was gonna cover this root. I'm gonna have to lower you again. Taking a Ziploc, I'm gonna cut the corner off here, thread it through, fill it up with moss, tie it to the plank, just like that. Just a thin layer of moss to begin with, threading it through. Then I'm just folding this top part here just to make a slit. Then grabbing some plant tape, threading it through, tying it to the plank or the plant. I know it looks funny guys, but this works. <laughs> and just the same thing down here, just making a slit, just so it can lift up a little bit and just latching it on to the existing tape here. Okay, I like that, looks hilarious. <laughs> Actually, I'm just gonna put more tape just to secure it in place because I think it might fall. <laughs> okay, cute. So once this develops um, a good root system or not even like maybe two to three inches in the adventitious roots, I'll chop it and that will be a separate video. Oh, hey guys. So I have my philodendron species silver slash Columbia. It's been a little over a week from the unboxing of this plant. And you know, I do this with every plant that I get in the mail. If I go to a garden store, I do the same thing. And this is my routine regardless of where I got the plant from. So I, you know, if you have a flashlight, I do a visual inspection. I use this old ring light that I have here. So here it is and I go and inspect each leaf one by one. So I already did half of the leaves and honestly what I'm looking for is like any damage that might be related to pests, specifically thrip damage. While I'm doing a visual inspection with that light, I also have my microscope here, Bluetooth to my phone. It's really a shame guys that my video function on this microscope camera thing isn't working but I'm able to take pictures. So I'm just gonna insert some pictures. So what I'm looking at here looks to be just cosmetic damage. But the thing with cosmetic damage, sometimes you're able to see eggs in the nooks and crannies. So even though I wouldn't necessarily relate this damage to pests, I like to take a close look just to see if there's any eggs, you know, see if there's any movement and I don't see anything. And yeah, I just continue to look kind of from side to side up and down and obviously looking at the back of the leaves guys obviously pests don't just live on leaves they live on the petioles the stem they also live in the aeroid mix or substrate as you can see this is a process that is very very time consuming but honestly guys it only takes one to you know result in an infestation by doing this often you kind of familiarize yourself with you know cosmetic damage and if it's linked to pest damage like for example thrips because i've dealt with that in the past either yellowing or silver streaks that look like more superficial streaks on the leaf surface that is a sign of thrip damage and i also know that north shore tropicals they use beneficial bugs so you know if i ever see something i would google what the bug looks like and this is why sometimes guys i prefer to buy smaller plants <laughs> because it's a lot easier to kind of get through them all so again <laughs> taking my ring light and just inspecting it
Depending what I find on the plants, it kind of determines what I do. Anything like spider mite related, I use the end all insectal soap. And like I said, I do about two rounds of treatment. So I would spray it, for example, today, and then I would do another one in two to four days. And if I'm super worried, I usually do a third one, same spacing about two to four days after the second one. If I see thrift damage, I usually prefer to use beneficial insects. For example, if I saw thrips on these plants, I would put them back in the bag, put two types of beneficial insects, I'll put the names over here, and I just leave them for a little bit. It's worked for me. I don't know if that's the most you know, effective way, but like for me, it's worked. Because I am transferring these plants to different substrate, for example, this philodendron species, silver, is in an aeroid mix. I am, I'm, I haven't decided I wanna do LECA or PON, but because I'm doing that, I do want to submerge more of the aerial roots into the substrate and to do that I unfortunately have to cut some of the old leaves so I'm just doing that now I'm just cutting a few old leaves here I know y'all are yelling but this is usually what I do so I've left four on this beauty for the forgetty eye same thing because there are a ton I don't know if you could see it there are a ton of adventitious roots and so I'd rather submerge them right now so each plant has three leaves left okay so this is what i use i used to just use the insectocidal soap so the directions on the bottle say 50 mils for one liter of water and i'm just putting it in So it claims to treat aphids, white fly, scale spider mites, and mealybugs. For y'all that don't know, systemics are actually very difficult, or I don't think Canada allows, you know, most systemics that are available in the US and other places. I do get comments about that all the time. And Canada does actually have very strict rules when it comes to systemics and all that stuff. Anyhow. What you want to do, you want to spray down all the leaves, the entire stem, petiole. You basically want to saturate everything. And again, I'm going to say this. It doesn't matter how trusted, you know, the place is. You know, it's better to be extra cautious in my opinion. So I'm just gonna let them sit in the sink for a little bit. I'll wash the soap off. But again, I like to do two treatments. So I'm actually going to put these back in that plastic bag, put against the west facing window, and then probably treat it again in two to three days. So we are here and um, I have my Anthurium forgetii. It's actually been, I wanna say two weeks from the time like I sprayed her down or whatever so I think I'm ready to put her into pawn and so what I'm going to do I'm just gonna take all this I don't know what it is someone said that it looks like tree fern but yeah here she is and I'm excited to see if I can separate you know these two plants um, if you missed it when I unboxed it like there were two separate plants I don't know if they're coming from like one growth point yeah look at that oh my god okay I'm not going to show you guys I'm just going to run these over the faucet try to get the majority of whatever substrate this is off okay so here they are they are dripping a little bit but I got the majority off so not all of it and that's okay. I think the main thing that, you know, I would suggest is submerging all these adventitious roots up here, just under the pond, keep them moist. And now that I know that they're two separate plants, I'm gonna have to put them in different pots. Oh my gosh, I have no room for this. Okay, here's my Lushu's pond. I have this self-watering pot. I'll put a link in the description below. You know, this would be a good opportunity to test the anthuriums and laca and pawn but um just in my experience when it comes to velvet leaf anthuriums even though the forgetii is usually very forgiving i do find that when the roots grow out into the nutrient reservoir it does suffer in the edges and i don't know if i want to do it with the forgetii because like she's my baby i'm just shaking it just so the pond disperses around the existing roots adding a bit more and here she is Look how cute, guys. She is so small. 
and I think she's like super adorable. So currently this is the biggest leaf here. Okay, so same pot here. And yeah, I guess that's it. So here's the second one. She is a little cutie. Oh my gosh, she's so small. And this is the one that has more of that signature veining here. The second one, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of more in love with. Don't, I'm sorry. I don't know. The veining is just so subtle. I love that. But yeah, oh my God, look at these spaghetti eye babies, guys. Okay, so I'm going to be using a diluted nutrient solution. I know, you know, it's the first time I'm using this pond, so there is a slow release fertilizer, but I firmly believe that anthuriums do need more nutrition. They are still young plants, so like some people might argue that they don't need them right now, but I think I would just focus on um, putting rapid start just to get the new roots like kind of acclimated to the pond. So I don't have any nutrient solution right now. I'm just gonna put some water first and maybe tomorrow when I make more solution, I will put it in here. Okay, so I have here my philodendron brantiatum. So if y'all remember the last time y'all saw her was when, you know, I was testing out this moss pole here from North Shore Tropicals. So far, I really like it, especially like how I secured it with the wires. So what I'm doing now with this plant is just running it over the faucet. So I'm taking it out of the net pot. We have some amazing root guys. I know it looks disgusting, but what I've found is that the roots don't necessarily mind sitting in the reservoir. And I've noticed it's been pretty resilient when it comes to forming uh, new branches and roots in the leco. Yeah, I just go over the top. There's maybe one or two leaves that had a hard time coming out, but I've noticed such a big difference just having this moss pole and having the leaves like unfurl properly. properly. So yeah, I kind of just stand here and just do this. Because she's in leca, I have the nutrients to about third way up the net pot. And what has been happening just because, you know, I do this kind of method with the moss pole, there is extra water that goes into the reservoir after. So I like to pour out a little bit just to kind of make room for some of the water going into the reservoir. And then I just put it back. How wonderful. I know I've grown this, you know, pretty large before, but I don't think the leaves have ever looked this happy. Um, let me just show you a few. Like this, this leaf just came out of nowhere. Um, this one came out unscathed. There's just leaves everywhere that are doing so well. She looks so good, guys. Oh my gosh. Big question, are the adventitious roots latching onto the moss pole? No. Uh, are they actually? They are. There's some that are in the moss. Oh my God, it's working. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so maybe I'll tie her down. I'll tie the stems up here just so, you know, it could root more. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I didn't expect that. So I'm gonna push this stem right in the middle. You could see the adventitious roots just against the moss plank. I think you could see right there, future Kevin zoom in, that root is kind of attached already. Obviously things change and plants are just gonna grow the way they grow, but um, I think the top adventitious roots for the most part are touching the moss pole right now. So super excited to watch this grow because she's already grown so much guys. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to just fill up the reservoirs of my plants in pond. I generally do this in the evenings just because, I mean, it's an easy task. Um, I use my big, is it a tank? It's like a pump. It's like a three liter pump where I can take like the nozzle and just water my plants. And I usually listen to a podcast or listen to music. Um, it's kind of a time where I decompress a little bit and probably one of my favorite things to do when it comes to plant chores. And today I'm listening to a Shania Twain playlist. Honestly, huge country fan, huge Shania fan. And a question for y'all who love Shania, what is your favorite song? I would have to say any man of mine, just a classic guys. Like I, I, ooh, that song is so, anyways, I'm gonna do my plant chores, but I want to show you, I guess the pump. So this is my three gallon pump. Again, I just pump to build the pressure and then I just reach over the plants 
and just water them. Oh yeah, and I don't know if you could see, but it's kind of orange. The reason why it's orange is because ooh, I almost dropped the whole thing. I am using my nutrient solution to water my plants. I don't always use my nutrient solution to water my plants in pond. I generally do every other watering. So the last time I watered all my plants in pond, I just use water. So I guess here we go. Okay guys, uh, it's dark outside. I don't know if you could see. I do plan to put out more plant tour videos. So I wanna try to make it like a weekly thing. Um, and on top of that, I am planning to do two, potentially three videos a week. So I do plan to have like either a vlog type video or like a plant tour video weekly. How do you guys feel about that? I don't know. And yeah, thank you guys for the continued support. Um, it really means a lot to me. And if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.